<laughs> Hello, everybody. It is I, your favorite nightmarin, Jackal. Now, before we can continue with this series, I have a little announcement to make. Today is officially my special day, Jackal Day. So, if you're all pretty much fans of me, then I wish to pretty much have the best day. <laughs> oh, boy. But, I will also pretty much announce that, well, we have a new cast member. And, if you really want to know who he is, well, you'll have to find out later on. But for now... I wish you all a good day, and happy day for me. <laughs> I'm going to check out that new happy farm. Jackal, did you take my sweets? Oh, shit. Hey, everyone. Ashley here with another Godzilla and his creepypasta chapter. But, oh, boy, the last episode was very, uh... I like to say, acid feel. Seriously, everyone seemed like they were on acid when they were going through that level. But anyways, we also got that unsettling, creepy approach from Red. Seriously, dude, you shouldn't have insulted the demon unless you're asking for it. So without further ado, let's see what's going to happen next. Dementia. Hmm. When I got back to the game, I was getting very upset and confused. Huh? I thought about the way the monster looked at me. The game couldn't have heard what I said. Well, you That's insulted him! It had to be a random occurrence. Uh, no. But why did it happen precisely at the moment I insulted the monster? Nothing about the game made any sense. The new Godzilla monsters, the weird replacement monsters, out-of-place imagery like the green temples, quiz levels, and the red monster chases. It Weird. didn't seem to add up in any kind Again, of meaningful way. Again, this should have been like a movie as if well, or an actual break, game, which is in development, anyway, by the way. I understand. Like I said last time. And they clearly put far too much effort into it. If they were trying to make a genuine sequel with new Godzilla monsters, then why did they add everything else? Who knows? Maybe it was some kind of art experiment. Some group project made by a bunch of really talented and crazy people, and they lost hmm. the cartridge somehow? It's or a mad science experiment, that's what. To find it. it was all just fruitless guessing. Yep. As far as I could tell, there was only one way to figure out what the deal was with this game. Uh. To play it through to the end. You. Maybe. Just well, maybe. You sealed your fate, buddy. You're credits, doomed. An explanation by the creators as to why they made this. <sighs> or it could be something much more cryptic and strange. Okay, Maybe seriously, even, even Momongo would have actually made a uh, better Before decision I got than a that. Good and... Look at the dementia board. I consider huh. replaying Trance to see if the red monster would look at me again, but I decided against it. Yeah, I best not do that, buddy. Forward, and I was also somewhat worried that backtracking might cause the game to become even more strange. Yep. The dementia board music sounded a lot like the Saturn music. Except it was slowed down and played with a piano-sounding instrument. Like most of these new map themes, okay. it had a dangerous, this, suspenseful this feel. This looks pretty interesting. While listening to the music, I looked at the dementia board. There were four boss monsters this time. Space Godzilla, Manda, Gigan, and Baragon. I was surprised that there were two new Toho monsters this time. But the best surprise was still to come. Ooh. I started the quiz level. Here's another bunch of results in the same format as the last Here we one. go! Can you swim? Yes. Yes. Do you like fish? Eh. Uh, yes. Kinda. I don't need it. Can penguins fly? No. No. Can it spin in all directions? What? There was no clarification of what face meant by it, so I just guessed. No. Oxygen? Yes. Yes. Does it taste good when you bite? What? It? I don't know who came up uh, with this, but I really hope they're getting mental help. Did Demiurge program this? Is it night where you are? 
Yes. Kinda. Do you like cats? Yes. Yes. Is water wet? Yes. Yes. Have you ever broken a bone? No. no. Not ever in my life. Your job? Yes. Um, okay. Would you like a new monster? Oh, sure! I wasn't entirely sure at the time what face meant by new monster, but I couldn't resist answering yes just to see what would happen. The result was mind-blowing. The game took me back to the board, and I had a new playable monster. Anguirus! In the form of Anguirus! Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to play as Anguirus, since he was my second favorite Godzilla monster. Hmm. And plus, I never liked Mothra all that much anyway. Aww. I moved my new Anguirus piece over to the level right next to it, eager to test out my new monster. Before I get into the level description, I'll talk about Anguirus a bit. Okay. Using the up and down oh, buttons, you a could choose choice. whether Anguirus stood in a bipedal stance or crawled around on all four. It wasn't a huge difference, but being able to stand was helpful in boss fights, and crawling sometimes helped dodge obstacles and attacks. He could punch and kick like Godzilla, but no tail whip. Instead, he had something far more interesting. The ability to curl up into a spiked ball of death and roll around. Ah, I see what you, you did could there! still take damage, but it was lessened. It was a good way of clearing out stage enemies, but unfortunately doing this also drained the power bar. But the spike ball wasn't the only special ability. When you press start, he would fire a beam of energy from his mouth. It resembled Titanosaurus's sonar attack. Oh! And if this was a hack, it may have been inspired by the roar attack of Atari's Godzilla fighting games. Also to note is that when playing as Anguirus, the level meter gets glitched up. Judging by the life and power bar, I'd say he's on level 10. Now okay. onto the level. As you might have guessed from the level icon, Ooh. these levels are green palleted swaps of the ground and background tiles. Green colors! But what immediately caught my attention was the water, which has a transparency effect. Was that even possible? Did we go to some Nautica or something? I know the Super Nintendo could do it, but I had never seen a transparency effect in a game on an NES. The Green Mountains music was played with the same instrument as the Blue Mountains, but the melody was totally huh? different. It was okay, a that was unsettling. With a lot of abrupt pauses, followed by a loud note every few seconds. Anyway, I went through the usual strolling through the level, and again there were no monsters or anything. But pretty soon I had reached a cliff above the water. There was nowhere to go but into the water, so down I went. The water transparency made things a bit harder to see, but it's tolerable. After going well, you're supposed to be underwater, right? New enemies, a giant piranha, and some kind of spiky bottom feeder thing. I liked the piranha because I could easily tell what it was. Okay. It was a sane enemy design that would appear in a real game. But there was very few enemies like this. They didn't take much hits to kill, but they were quite annoying, and could considerably trim down your life if they got close enough. Ooh. They also tend to travel in packs. As for the bottom feeders, they're easy to deal with. They swim along the bottom of the screen towards you, and are easily crushed with the roll attack, or jumped over in the screen cap. You can see me about to run over one of them, and there is a pack of piranha behind it. After I beat the level, I moved Godzilla onto the blue castle icon. I started the level, and I got a title screen with huh? the text, Unforgiving Cold. The That's... level itself looked like a castle dungeon made of blue bricks huh? with rows of identical white statue faces on the walls. Ooh. These statue faces had a permanent look of horror on their faces. Why? There were also some flickering gray static which didn't really obscure my vision. Well, Godzilla's used to this kind of stuff. Of these levels. The music was a 12-second loop of a low-pitched choir vocalizing that sounded very familiar to me. How? Whenever I played through one of these levels, I got this sudden horrible feeling of anxiety. I had the feeling that the farther I progressed through the level, the closer I was getting to something unspeakably evil. There oh, gee, I wonder what that can lead to. But these were some of the longest levels in the game. 
I only played one level, but it took seven minutes to complete. Seven minutes? I didn't want to admit it to myself at the time, but I realized something playing the Blue Castle level. This game has the power to make the player feel certain things. I don't mean in the sense that you get that you get irritated playing a crappy game or getting unnerved by something scary in a game. What I mean is that certain events in this game can instantly make you feel something. I know that sounds completely insane, and I don't blame you for not believing me. I Chills. wouldn't believe any of this either if I didn't play the game myself. But there is something very, very wrong with this game, and I still don't know how to explain it. You're so, the one who chose to play this, man! It's time to fight Baragons. Right? Wow! It's a two-legged mammoth! Although Baragon was originally the smallest monster in the game, his replacement was the largest. It was so tall, in fact, the ground was noticeably lowered, and not Baragon's head still barely avoided collision with the bar at the top of the screen. And he was just as frighteningly bizarre as he was huge. Oh, wow. You may be wondering how he attacks without arms. Well, he has the most powerful kick in the game, Ooh. but his other fighting technique is much stranger. First, he blasts a cloudy breath of pixels down at you, which causes... Ah, he used, I, he used Tundra's breath then attack. Then he walks back to the right corner of the screen and... and extends a huge Gatling gun from his abdomen. Oh! That might seem amusing to you, but it certainly wasn't for me when I was playing this game. This attack Ouch. was almost as annoying as Gigant's rotary cutter and not Baragon could have been unbeatable if he constantly used it. Thankfully, he only did it twice while fighting me. Once you Yow. freeze, you can run up and Yeah, just get blasted by a run, gun! Which does extra damage to him. This helped me to destroy him, and then a it was time to weapon play the third level. Used by the monster that knows how to use weapons. I was going to use Angiris to fight Manda and Gigan, okay. and then fight Space Godzilla as Godzilla. It was only fitting. True. Before getting into the battles, I'll describe the third level type, the Arctic. The Arctic is exactly what you'd guess from the name. An icy tundra with a few water tundra. segments. Tundra? Just a moment. The mu uh, hey Tundra! Tundra! What? Someone mentioned about your name! Did they now? Yes. Alright, alright, I'll give it a look. Oh, I see. Strange. And yet, it reminds me of Holoska. Well, it's not Holoska. Oh. Hmm. Well then, it's interesting. Why are you reacting to this? Because I chose to. Ah, well then. I will carry on then. Um, thank you for showing me this. No problem. Hmm. What's this about? A tundra? Hmm. Ah, Club, what are you doing here? Oh, I hope you don't mind, but I happen to be curious about this. I hope you do not mind me being here. Just don't cause any trouble, okay? Oh, don't worry. I, I won't. You were hanging around with Tundra for a bit, weren't you? Northern Hemispheres hmm. from Donkey Kong Country in 8-bit form. Hmm. A very dangerous sounding song. Godzilla. It huh? made me think about being trapped in a tundra and freezing to death. <laughs> I have no there issue with cold environments. The first was a creature frozen in a block what? of ice. What is that? They blocked Did your way. You have to use the heat beam. Okay, to them out it of seems the that ice. Tundra froze them. They look a bit like a smaller version of Notgizora, only without the eyes. When freed, they do a strange crawling movement and push you backwards. It doesn't cause any damage, but it is a bit annoying. After dealing with the Ice Man, I kept walking ice for a minute or two and came upon a water segment. I jumped in, and this time I managed to get a screen cap showing how the water splashes oh, when you jump in. If there were orcas in this, I don't know how they programmed that. It would but be it's pretty impressive. 
Another interesting thing is how the this screen was changes NES. focus when you go Apparently it is. Here you can see the other new enemy, a little thing I call Spike Walker. They walk towards you and explode randomly, or instantly if you attack them, sending spikes in every direction. The spikes don't do much damage, but they did get me dangerously close to falling into a pit. So those are landmines. More like water oh, mines. Speaking of the pits, don't go into the water. The game has a platformer element, bottomless pits. Ooh. There weren't any of these in the original game, since this Platforms was in this? an action game. But the no. pits were a neat addition. If you want to get one hit KOs, or, in this case, instant deaths. Ah. Maguma, the walrus kaiju. Oh, now I know that's a big, massive meal I can have. With, but... Oh, God! Not that I'm complaining. It's what? a pretty cool cameo for an unappreciated I thought you were away. Maguma's fighting mm. tactics. If you want to fight simple. me, fight me! Get a freeze beam After and this. could charge into you. Not very challenging, but certainly more entertaining than the Matongo mini boss in the original game. Hmm. One really interesting thing about Magma is that he doesn't die when you defeat him. He turns tail and retreats. Oh. This was the first time I ever seen any enemy monster change direction. It's better to be safe than sorry. Retreat. I'm surprised Godzilla didn't him, eat this but he thing. Disappeared after I got then again, the water. he probably has some manners. And that does it for the Arctic. Mm -hmm. I'll talk well. about the Manda fight next. All right, yeah. Very well then. So sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure why that orc at the sites to show up. It's one of the rare occasions where he does. Anyways. I forgot to mention before, but the music that played during the new monster fights is reused mm. from the themes actually in the game. Okay. So far, the themes better have than coming up with new ones. Zora's music or it's lazy. for Titanosaurus, Hedora's music for Biolanti, Baragon and Mogira's music for Orga, Varen's music for Manda, and Mechagodzilla's music for Space Godzilla. Hmm. As for the fight, Manda was a fairly crafty opponent. When it realized one tactic was ineffective, it would immediately change to a different one. A, a dragon? Manda used quite okay. a few tricks, like spitting fire, biting, and most irritating of all, constricting. Ah! It doesn't mercilessly drain your life down, like Gigant's Cutter, but it was by far Manda's strongest attack. One last thing to note that I found pretty cool was that the Atragon shows up during oh. the fight to help me out. Just like in Gaza Unleashed. Keys, but it was still pretty cool. Hey. After I slayed Manda, I played through an Arctic level for health power-ups, and then it was on to Gigant's replacement. Oh. When the fight started, I was very confused because there was nothing there. Hmm. I thought this was going to be like the Titanosaurus, quote, fight in Pathos. But just about the time it would have been going back to the so, back, a piranha th appeared on screen. That's a lot of fish! But it wasn't there for long. As soon as it appeared, the speakers emitted an ear-splitting screech. What? And not Gigan. Whoa! Jeez! Well, that's one way to get the player on their toes. Yep. That abrupt entrance scared the hell out of me and got my All right. rushing. Time Which, to fight not Gigan. Was a good thing because not Gigan was one of the fastest, most unrelenting opponents in the game. Not Gigan was tough, but my new skills with Angiris helped to even the score. This was still an incredibly intense fight. Not Gigan's attacks consisted of some kind of blood laser he spewed from his mouth and a downward slash. I was expecting some hellish variant of the buzzsaw attack. But thankfully, there didn't seem to be one. The howl attack was invaluable in defeating him. I would have taken more screen caps of the fight, but I really had to concentrate. Okay. After that, there was just one more monster left to take down. Space Godzilla. As mentioned earlier, I used Godzilla for this fight. All right, the king versus the space king. Was rather frustrating, but admittedly a very clever idea. Space Godzilla would use his energy to Did create say space? crystals. I could have sworn he said space. Become crystal spires. 
These spires not only block you from reaching Space Godzilla, but it also allowed him to constantly recharge to full energy, uh. and blast you with a deadly full-charged Corona Beam until you broke the spires. Uh. Space Godzilla would eventually drain his own spires for energy until they shattered, but if you waited for that to happen, you'd probably lose a lot of life. Heat beams actually seem to re-energize the spires, so you have to use physical attacks. Okay. When he finally got close enough to hit Space Godzilla, he was no pushover. When I punched him, he hit me back just as hard. Space Godzilla does everything in his power to knock you back to the left corner of the screen so he can create more spires. By the time this was over, I only had about five life bars left. But it Ooh. didn't matter. Because I didn't need to fight anymore. Oh boy! I to run. Run! Here we go again. Hi, Red! Right then and there that I really wanted to see the end of this game. As terrifying as these levels could sometimes be, I had to beat them to get through. I decided that no matter what happened, no matter what the game showed me, I was going We're to going back game. into the inferno, guys! I almost made sure not to say a damn word when playing a chase level from here yes. on. For this chase, I tried out Angiris, since his roll attack allowed me to move faster than Godzilla or Mothra. Good. The chase started off like the first two. Except there was a river of blood <sighs> I was beginning to get the hang of it, and the extra speed of the roll helped me get an edge on the red monster. Especially since I didn't have to worry about a power limit, and could keep rolling endlessly. They see me rolling, like the levels, they hate water, it! The ground inevitably reached okay. a stop, so I rolled off into the blood. To my <sighs> surprise, the hell beast didn't follow after me. It just stopped at the edge of the ground and grimaced. I guess it can't swim, I thought to myself. Ah! Uh, you think I otherwise! Went under blood and continued moving. There wasn't anything around, but I knew something was up. The chase wasn't going to end that easily. Nope! Surely something else had to show up, and sure enough, I heard the bellowing roar, sounding slightly different. And the monster. Uh, fell. there it is! A new aquatic body. I had no idea it was a shapeshifter. Yeah, a shapeshifter! You didn't know that, huh, guys? To the difficulty I had expected, being submerged slowed me down, putting me and the beast at about the same speed. The only thing that would keep me alive was fast thinking and reflexes. I encountered some bottomless pits in which ah, great. Up from. It can't be I that easy. One, it would damage you and knock you back. Considering how fast the red monster swims, hitting the mines would be instant death. So I went through great effort to avoid them. But that wasn't all I had to be wary of. Halfway through the chase, the Hell Beast revealed yet another surprise. Another a surprise attack? Formed of an Whoa! Intestine and tipped with a clawed set of jaws bursting. That is one big tongue! Trying to pull me in and devour me. I only barely avoided both the tongue oh, hey. and the monster. It's like alien a bit. Tell the beast was getting desperate because the chase was nearly. And about a minute later, I had spotted a bit of ground that served as the exit. I leaped with all the might I could muster. Yes. The beast screamed with rage and jumped out of the blood river with one last attempt to drag me down. Nice try, Red. Its grasp. This time, I fell back onto my bed and took Ugh. a deep breath, satisfied and yet another successful escape. Mm -hmm. Now I was headed onto the fifth world. Entropy. Well, that was definitely interesting. Well, the last chapter basically was an acid trip. This one was definitely very chilly. And let me tell you, I really don't like the cold. And that swimming section. Oh boy. Now we know Red is a shapeshifter! Well, good for him. He is very athletic, I'll give him that. Anyways, uh. I hope.
hope you all enjoyed this, and uh, I'll see you all in the next chapter. Bye, everyone.